Welcome to Victory. I want to thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. Thank you for watching the program. I'm the senior pastor at Victory in Camden and Victory in El Dorado. We have campus pastors at each one of those. And we just want to thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for letting Victory be a part of your family and a part of your life. You know, during the service today, there'll be a telephone number at the bottom of your screen. If you would take advantage of it, let us know what's going on in your life. If God is dealing with your heart, if you're rejoicing in your heart, things that we can stand with you and pray with you about, call that number at the bottom of the screen. Let's go right into that service at Victory now. Breath that I 
many enjoying learning about the Holy Spirit? Isn't it wonderful? Man, all right, Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God or the Spirit gave them utterance. That's a major move of God for the Holy Spirit. I also want to mention right at the beginning here, there's two levels of the Holy Spirit that we must be aware of. It's the same precious Holy Spirit, but there's two levels. I'm going to demonstrate that one level by right here. You know, the Bible says when it comes to the Holy Spirit, that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this illustrates the point of the Holy Spirit when we get saved. I tell you, the Holy Spirit comes in our life and begins to just fill us more and more and more. And the Holy Spirit doesn't stop because it just begins to spill over into all our life. That's what happens when we come to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that saves us. It's the Holy Spirit that does a work in us. It's the Holy Spirit that begins that desire to live for God in us. It's the Holy Spirit that begins to open up the Word. But then, according to Jesus, Jesus offered a level two to the Holy Spirit. And that's what he called being baptized in the Holy Ghost. So not only can I receive the Holy Spirit at the point of salvation, Jesus Jesus said there is this wonderful gift that he wanted to make available to people, which is to be filled or be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And this symbolizes what is the difference? You're as full as can be, but what can happen when you're baptized? You become submerged. And all of a sudden, the very same thing that has filled you now becomes all around you. The Bible describes it like this. There becomes water to swim in, and there's waters of healing and miracle power. So in, when we think about the Gospels, the Gospels of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it, it shares the power of the Holy Spirit working in the life of Jesus. But we come right out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then we start talking about the book of Acts, or the next book in sequence is the book of Acts. And the book of Acts is the power of the Holy Spirit working in me, or working in you. Yes, all, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John show the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the life of Jesus. When he healed the multitudes, he delivered, he set people free. But then in the book of Acts... What that shares is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the life of believer that will allow the Holy Spirit to fill their life and then move on into that area of baptism. What, are, what is the two differences in these? It's really no difference other than this. And when you become baptized in the Holy Spirit, it intensifies everything that you receive at the Holy Spirit of salvation. It just intensifies it. All of a sudden, your desire grows, your, your ability to move in the power of the Lord. Everything just intensifies. It's not something new, but it intensifies something that God's already started in our lives at the point of salvation. So I want to talk to you this morning about the Holy Spirit working in our life. Uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 14, there's this powerful verse there that just kind of tells me what the Holy Spirit wants to do in my life. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. I want you to notice what that says. If I will not only allow the Holy Spirit to live in me, but if I will begin to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, and to direct my life, the Bible says that I become a son of God. Now that's a little different because that word son there is a, is a, is a Greek word that has to do for maturity. The way I grow up in God is I give more of my life to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in my life. If I want to mature and if I want to grow in the things of God, I want to become a mature Christian. A mature Christian, according to this scripture, has nothing to do with the time that you've been saved. But it has to do with the amount of my life that I will yield to the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says those that are led by the Holy Spirit, they become mature children of God. So if you want to grow up, if you're tired of being on baby level, if you're tired of, of just, uh, so to speak, just eating the 
the sidelines or, or sometimes seem like even the crumbs of life, but you're ready for the Lord to help you to dive in to the deep things of God. The Bible says then, then you allow the Holy Spirit to become a greater and a greater leadership in our life. So the more I yield to the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God is defined through its several different symbols. And one of those symbols is the wind of God. The Holy Spirit is the wind of God. That's talking about the creative power of God. When you have the Holy Spirit or you're yielding to the Holy Spirit in your life, then you have the creative power of God that's able to flow in your life. And then they're also described as the breath of God. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. That means it can speak to me. It can talk to me. It can lead me. The Bible says it's my teacher. It's my guide. It's the one that's leading me into a victorious life. So I want to spend just a few minutes this morning. I want to keep talking about the Holy Spirit being the very breath of God, the Holy Spirit. And I, as I mentioned to you in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let me pull that out of a different version and says it like this. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. What are you moved by? It says the mature children of God are those that are moved by the impulses or the nudges of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is involved in every one of our lives. Now, if you've been saved, much more so. You've been filled with the Spirit of the Lord. God's filled you up with the water of His Spirit. And so, therefore, the Lord is gives you impulses and nudges. But now, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, then the whole thing is intensified into a, even a much greater level. And so what that means is that the Lord's impulses will become much stronger in you. His direction will be much stronger in you. His leadership will be much stronger in you. So we must learn to live. If I'm going to allow my life to be led by the Holy Spirit, if I want to grow up in God, if I want to become a mature believer in the Lord, and if I want to yield more of my life to the Holy Spirit, then there's certain things I need to do. I need to have an expectation of a supernatural encounter. I need to have an expectation. I need to expect God to do some things. I must expect God to direct me and to lead me. Because unless I'm looking for that nudge, unless I'm looking for the Holy Spirit to lead me, then more say I won't recognize it when he does. So I must begin to have an expectation of the supernatural encounter. The second thing, I've got to rethink in line with the supernatural encounter. I've got to be develop the mind of Christ where I begin to think in line with a supernatural encounter. Where it won't be just, I wonder if things will work out. It begins, I wonder what the Holy Spirit is going to do to help things to work out. I wonder what the Holy Spirit is saying to me to help me to work this out. I wonder what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do. Because the member of the way we become mature is we come to a place of yielding more of being led by the Holy Spirit. So we got to rethink in line with super. I got to remember. I got to remember supernatural encounters. So many times God will be nudging us and if we don't give a remembrance to it, if we don't make a mark in our memory with it, before you know it, we forgot about what God's even told us to do. And before long, we'll be doing our own thing. So we got to remember those supernatural encounters. I want to encourage you this morning. There's not a one of us that God doesn't give a little poke, a little push, a little nudge, a little word, something to get us moving in the right direction. But if I don't mark that, let it be important to me. If I don't focus on it before long, I'll even for, be forgotten that God even nudged me. And then when the thing ends in a total disaster, then I'll be saying, God, why didn't you help me? And we find that all the time the Lord was trying to help us. All the time the Lord was giving these precious nudges and, and, and directions that we just failed to give heed to. The fourth thing is we got to rehearse the supernatural encounters. We got to rehearse them. We got to tell them again and again. God wants to change. God wants to develop in me the lifestyle so I can be led by the Spirit of the Lord. And my life can move into maturity. I'm going to have to quit just rehearsing the ball games or the political area. I've got to begin to rehearse what God is doing in my life. I must begin to talk about it, speak about it. My conversation needs to change. 
I need to begin to tell other people. You know, I feel I feel God is telling me this. We got to remember when we go to prayer, we got to rehearse it in prayer. Unless I will focus on what God is nudging me or directing me to do, then I will not give attention of my life to, then I really won't be able to walk on it. So what that means is I, when the Lord is nudging me, speaking to me, and maybe I'm out in public and maybe you can just sense the Lord begin to draw you back or begin to push you forward. That's got to have great importance in our life. We've got to remember it and rehearse it over and over. God wants to help me to be spiritual. He wants to give me a new sensitivity to the Spirit of God. God wants to awaken my senses to Him. The Bible says I have to learn to, to find the Lord with my senses. So I have to awaken my senses to be sensitive. I have to, be, I have to change my outlook instead of just looking at things in the natural. I've got to begin to look at things toward the supernatural power of God. I've got to begin to expect God to come my rescue. And then thirdly, if I'm going to become spiritual, I've got to change my conversation. I've got to develop a spiritual conversation. I must allow God to develop in me a spiritual person. But that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's our teacher. He's our guide. Man, He's taken on the responsibility of taking us where we are to the place that God wants us to be. He's taken on the responsibility not only to fill my glass with water, or with the presence of himself, but he's taken on the responsibility to allow my life to be submerged in the presence and the power of God. This morning, I just want to close with this. One of the greatest things, and Lord willing, we'll start talking about that next week. One of the greatest things God wants to do, God wants to speak to me. God wants me to begin to hear his voice. So as I'm, as I'm developing and determining I'm going to become more and more a spiritual person in Him, I must begin to listen more. And Lord willing, next week we're going to talk about the 10 most common ways that God speaks into our life. To where I can have my antennas up. And I, I don't know what your antennas receiving this morning. I, I do know this, that on this parking lot right here, there is sound waves that's going on and there's much information that's gathered. And if you've got the right kind of antenna and if you've got the right kind of tuner, you can begin to hear things that you had no idea was out there. There are things that God is wanting to do in each of our lives that we haven't seen, that we haven't even heard. But if we can begin to tune our life to the voice of the Spirit of God, that desires to speak to us. If I will begin to tune my life into Him, He will begin to share His heart for me with me. And it won't be long. In fact, when God talks to me, two major things happen. One major thing that happens when God talks to me, the dunamis or the power of God comes in our life. Because the power of God always accompanies God's voice. So if I can tune my life into the Holy Spirit, and I, if I can begin to listen in here and not just out here, and if I can begin to recognize God's got some things He wants to talk to me about, <laughs> and if I will begin to tune my tuner <laughs> to hear Him, power comes. <laughs> That's the word dunamis. That's where the word, we get the word dynamite. That's what it talks about. It comes, happens to us when the Holy Spirit is given a greater lead way in our life. Power comes. But there's another word that happens when we begin to give our Holy Spirit lead way in our life. It's the Greek word exousia. And what it means, authority. So not only does God give you the power, the dynamite, God also gives you the plunger, the authority to execute it in our life. But only if we hear the voice of the Lord are we able to take heed. You know, Jesus said it even prior to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So that means that I'm 
a sheep, if I'm obeying as a sheep, if I'm coming to the place, I should begin to hear the Lord in my life. Don's coming to pray with us about that. God bless you this morning. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give pastors a great big horn blow and lift our hands unto the Lord to this morning. Father, we thank you for this holy moment in our lives today. Lord, we just declare and decree this morning. Will of God come? Will of God be done in and over our life, God? Holy Spirit, we open up for more of you to lead and guide us this morning. Right there where you are, in your car, wherever you're listening, wherever you are looking at, uh, online or wherever, just lift your hands before the Lord and just say, Lord, I beseech myself by the mercy of God that I'm here to present my body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God, which is our reasonable service. Lord, we don't want to be conformed to this world, but we want to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, Lord, thank you for answering our prayers this morning. Thank you for letting your will be done in our life today. Thank you, Lord, for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and the Holy Ghost. Lord, we give you praise and give you glory for leading and guiding us. Our path is health and healing today. So, Father, we give you praise for all the goodness and the benefit that we have in you. We just lift ourselves to you this morning, God, and say, Lord, you can have us. You can have all of us. We present it to you today. And, Lord, thank you that you know how to do us good in our life. So, Lord, we yield to you today, and we thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand blow today. It's been four years ago I lost my home. Having four children and losing a home was a very great milestone because not knowing where you're going to go to. And so I was in a, a very bad state of uh, not knowing where I'm going to go to. Something I had been there almost 15 years in this home and I lost it. So to have it lost and have four kids and know, know where to go to, it was a great situation right there. I cried out and I was asking God, where was he at? Where was he at? I didn't, I didn't see with one day having a home and then the next day saying that you had to move. I was like, Lord, am I, am I not hearing you? Am I lost? What's going on? We were kind of home to home, gotten another home that I couldn't really afford. With my, my, my faith being tested, I I just kind of dug in and just really sought out God. That's when um, God stepped in and this home was given to me. And it's been two years now. Going from homeless to having something that's my own. I don't have any mortgage payments. The land is mine. And all I have to do is just, just move in. I feel great. I have something that I can leave for my children, their children. So it's, it's, it's awesome, the goodness of God. To hear more of Victory Testimonies of Lives Changed, Healed, and Restored, log on to www.thevictorychurch.com slash my story. I believe the Holy Spirit has touched our life today. I believe that the words that were spoken, I believe God is dealing with us. And for many of us, maybe we need to make some things right with God. Maybe there's some areas of our life that we need to surrender to Him. Maybe there's some things that the Holy Spirit is asking us to come over or come out of. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you and ask God to forgive us? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to surrender those areas of our life? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to be able to change things through His power, to be able to live differently, talk differently, think differently, and be different? God can help us do that. That's all in the areas of God's strength and His power is to help us live a victorious life. Let's pray. Would you pray and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my failure. Now, Lord, I ask you to come in my life. And Lord, right here 
Today, I ask you, God, that you would be Lord of my life. And Lord, in the issues of my life that I need to surrender to you, the areas of fear and discouragement, the things that's caused me to be depressed and those things that's hit hard on me or those things that's tried to come into my life and overcome my life, Lord, I come today to surrender them to you. I know that you're able, God, to free me, to help me. And Lord, I surrender them in Jesus' name to you. And now, Lord, I ask you for your grace and for your strength to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call that number on the bottom of the screen. Will you call us and let us hear from you? Will you let us be a part of your support team? Let us be a part of that team that's gonna be praying with you and standing with you and believing God with you. And also on the website, let us hear of your prayer request. God bless you and I pray that this week will be the strongest week in the Lord you've ever had. Look forward to it next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abrams. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.